Hello everyone, my name is Marsha Rath and I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, but after I married, our business took us to Florida, Georgia, and then back again to Florida. After my husband Marshall went into his next life while we were living in Gainesville, Florida, I moved to New York City for 11 years before I moved to Austin, Texas three years ago. I began my art career when I became a photographer in 1968. And then because I wanted to study in Japan and they weren't offering photography, I chose ceramics. And that led me to becoming a professional sculptor specializing in public art in 1986. Today I have 18 sculptures in public places internationally. I love to live and work in foreign cities and here I am in Malaga doing just that. In the past, I've lived and worked and studied in London and Paris several times, India, Japan, Buenos Aires, and Israel. One of the highlights of my career was in 1989 when I was accepted to exhibit my columns 1, 2, and 3 in the London Royal Academy of Art Summer Exhibition of 1989. It was a great beginning for my career because I not only was featured on CNN, highlight international news, but I sold the sculpture to a London corporation for their offices. This is a small version of that sculpture that's in this exhibit in a rusty steel finish. I've made this form in several different sizes and finishes. This rusty steel version is currently in front of the University of Florida's Architecture School and also at the New York State's Ward Pound Ridge Reservation. It was moved there after being on exhibit in the New York City Park District Broadway Malls at 68th and Broadway. It's also on exhibit in Rusty Steel in Tyler Park Sculpture Garden, Tyler, Pennsylvania, and in a private garden in Encino, California. Columns 1, 2, and Series 2 in Oleander Red are now on exhibit in the Dell Jewish Community Campus in Austin, Texas. In the, this exhibit here in Malaga, I have a total of seven sculptures and six finger labyrinths for the wall and canvas. I'd like to tell you what inspired me to make, to make each one of these. I titled this painting, Apple Green Golden Spiral. The idea came from the request of a designer friend, Mark Tamayo, who wanted me to do a painting that had a piece of fruit in it that he could use in the storefront window that he was designing for Steuben Glass on Madison Avenue in New York City. I thought, hmm, this is a new challenge because I wasn't a full-time painter, but when I noticed the drawing of the golden spiral on my drawing table, where I had put it until I would have an idea how to use it in my work, I realized that the bottom curve was that of an apple. My first piece in this series was this painting with an apple in it as commissioned. I somehow knew that if I installed it on a mirror, it would have an additional interesting image. When a mathematician friend came in and saw it, he said I now had a cardioid shape reflected in the mirror. I didn't know the shape I liked so much had a name. I immediately added the plus cardioid to the title. I thought the next in this series should be just the golden apple and the golden spiral. So I had a cast in bronze and put a 23 karat gold leaf finish on it so it could be installed over water without the water staining the finish. And then it would have the water to reflect the cardioid image. This is portal number 9 Unity with revolving triquetra. It's made of stainless steel and the triquetra revolves with the force of the wind. I designed this as an entry to a competition in Ireland for a complex of residences. I intended it to be installed over a triquetra labyrinth so that when they walked the labyrinth, the path would take them through the sculpture. Here's a drawing of it. Portal number one, series 1C, is a variation of finish of the first portal, which I discovered as I was cutting wood to begin a new sculpture, and suddenly I saw this shape 
and I thought it would make a really nice sculpture. I liked it so much I made it in different materials. Today the same sculpture is at the entrance to Maccabeam Israel in rusty steel. Portal number 3, series 2C, that's in this exhibit is a small size of the monumental version that was commissioned by the city of Modin, Israel for a new entrance on the western side of the city. It's in the shape of a keystone because I've always loved keystones in architecture. I had been doing a series of portals and I found it interesting to see my work evolve into labyrinths and then into finger labyrinths and also labyrinth sculptures. Labyrinths are a form of portal since walking them can be considered a walking meditation that acts as a portal to your center. I always liked when an artist would make work that was a symbol of something important to them. A friend of my ceramics class came from Israel and she was making pyramid shapes in Israeli colors. When I saw a picture of the famous Shark Cathedral Labyrinth on Wikipedia, I immediately thought I wanted to design labyrinths. I wanted to use a symbol of something, so I chose to use an Israeli symbol for my first labyrinth to be stalled on the ground. I used the shape of a dreidel. Here is a virtual installation of it. A dreidel is part of a Jewish game using Hebrew letters, and since I knew it was a very popular game, I thought it would be a perfect symbol for my first labyrinth. I soon realized that I could cut it in metal to hang on the wall and then I made it three-dimensional to stand alone as a sculpture. The dreidel labyrinth sculpture was the first sculpture I made for my first labyrinth that I designed to go on the ground. I made it in two sizes. The larger size that you're looking at right now won the sculpture award at the National Arts Club in New York City. The smaller size won the sculpture award at the Salman Gundy Club in New York City. The pear finger labyrinth bronze was inspired as part of a series of fruit labyrinths I designed to be enlarged to be used separately or together in a public place so the visitors could walk the labyrinth with their finger. Here's a virtual installation of what it may look like finished and painted bronze. Because I wanted to exhibit my finger labyrinths in many places, beginning with this exhibit in Malaga, I used canvas as the medium so they would be convenient to walk and easy to move from place to place. I've also made them in mosaic and in plexiglass. They can be seen in my gallery in Austin or on my website. These are unique because the usual labyrinth in the is a traditional circle or a square with variations on the number of circuits and because these are large and for the wall rather than small labyrinths that people can put in their laps. I'd like to encourage you to walk one or two or as many of them as you choose. I have prepared statements about what is a labyrinth, why you should walk a labyrinth, and how to walk a labyrinth that may be helpful to you before you begin your walk. I invite you to come back and walk them as often as you are able. I hope you'll have the time to write your response to walking these labyrinths in the book at the entrance to this gallery. Thank you for your interest in my sculptures, and I certainly hope you enjoy your time spent here. Thank you. Bye-bye.